Hi everybody and welcome to the latest video. I thought today I would just do a what sold video and um, share with you guys some items that I've sold recently. And the emphasis of this video is to show you items that are realistic um, for you to find, um, likely for you to find, because it can be quite tempting, especially when you're making YouTube videos, uh, to share those items that are really niche, uh, that are really uh, high value often, but they're not easy to find. Um, so I try to, I'm trying to show here some items that I think can be found with some kind of regularity or at least within the same niche. Uh, so without further ado, let's just get on with some, some items and some sales. These have all come from the past seven days, so they're current. Uh, so this information as of now is useful. Uh, but obviously, if you're watching this video and you're watching it like a year in, a year or something down the line, then you're going to have to take a lot of this with a pinch of salt. Um, first item I want to share with you guys is kind of interesting because I bought this whole massive job lot of die cast cars. Now these die cast cars are not high end, they're by a company called RBA Collectibles. Um, the name to look out for is also Atlas and you'll come across these quite regularly. And these were the kinds of cars that were uh, given away as like part of like multi-part magazines at news agents. So it'd be like a fiver for the magazine and you'd get one of these cars and you get a different car each whatever week or month, how, however often they came out. Now, the interesting thing about this is if you actually searched for uh, what this was, I actually bought these cars as a job lot. I paid like a tenner for a whole box of them. There was a whole stack of them with the magazines all sealed up as well. Now, unfortunately, the sealing um, of these, they came in as little blister packs, which made them very difficult to photograph because there was a lot of glare and some of the blister packs had had sun damage and they would, had gotten hazy. And also the magazines themselves don't really have much value. And if you actually just searched for, uh, you know, for example, in this case, RBA Tyrrell or something, uh, six wheeler, um, you know, RBA mag like with the magazine or something, I've often seen sellers selling the magazine and the car for about seven pounds, eight pounds. I've actually been able to get rid of all the magazines, which were just bulky, more made things more difficult in terms of shipping and in terms of space. Um, and I got rid of the sealed packaging that these cars came in because it really wasn't nice. It wasn't like a proper acrylic case. It was just like a cheap plastic blister pack um, that didn't really help. And being able to take photographs of the die cost car close up like this has meant we've actually sold quite a few of these we're almost out of the whole lot the whole box i bought and like i said i paid like a tenner for the whole box uh, and we've been selling them on average for like 12.99 some a bit more some a bit less but more or less 12.99 is the baseline and some of the rarer ones were a little bit more so you know with free shipping but really good profit margin when you think it was like a tenner for a whole box of them and a nice easy sales and we've been selling them in the shop as well which is quite nice so um, definitely worth looking out for this kind of stuff if you can buy it cheap enough from car boots often what you'll find is people have either um, just given up on a collection and they bring the whole lot in or sometimes you'll get people that buy at auctions and bringing stuff like this in and trying to clear it at a car boot so you should come across this kind of stuff quite regularly uh, so yeah just keep an eye on it uh, die cast racing cars and things like that that came with magazines can have value um, but definitely take some good photos and and you know do your research on them but I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, next item, this was a super, super fast sale. I think I picked this up on Saturday. It is today. Today is Tuesday, I think. Um, and this sold like, I don't know when it sold. I think it was sold on Bank Holiday Monday, maybe, or maybe even on the Sunday. Paid a pound for this. It's a G-Tech uh, vacuum battery. Um, you will see G-Tech stuff a lot. G-Tech are those handheld vacuums. Uh, you'll often see stalls that, for example, specialize in electronics and they'll have a stall full of like different electronics. You might not get a great deal from them because obviously they're going to be dealing in that stuff, but it's good to be aware of the brand and to be aware of the fact that if you do see a G-Tech vacuum, there is value in it. Um, and you, even if the vacuum itself is not working, there's often value in the dustbin especially in the battery even if it's used uh, definitely worth looking out for for them so you can just take them apart and, and just part them out and sell them so i paid a pound for this battery and it sold uh, very quickly for 40 so gtech definitely a brand you want to keep um, in mind uh, moving on to the next item 
This is a Sony mini disc remote control. A lot of people know remote controls do have great uh, value and there's lots of remote controls at uh, every car boot you go to. So it's a no brainer to have a little uh, look through the crates and crates of remote controls. Now, like with a lot of things, the majority of them are not gonna have a substantial value or will take a while to sell. However, there are certain things you should look out for. So for example, AV receiver remote controls do quite well. You'll be able to tell those by the kind of inputs they got um, and obviously the brand of, of that type of thing can make a difference now this is a bit of a no-brainer this was a sony mini disc remote control i picked up uh, mini disc remote controls um, for mini disc decks and mini disc stereos uh, do sell well and sell pretty quickly i put this up for 25 i actually sent out an offer for 22 and um, that was accepted and it sold within a week of listing, I believe, probably quicker, but like pretty quite under a week, but I think it was a, a week will be safe for, for us to say so. That's over 22 pounds. You can often pick up remotes for 50 pence, pound, two pounds at a car boot. So um, if you see a Sony mini disc one, definitely pick it up, but there's also like a plethora of other types of remote controls that you should be keeping an eye out for. Um, moving on, something a little bit different, but also definitely worth a noting. Um, if you're hands-on with your electronics, this is a Dell XPS motherboard and CPU. Now, old computers uh, you can often find at car boots. Obviously, people do take them and clear them out, house clearance, etc. Um, but also your Facebook Marketplace and things like that. And and oftentimes people are just getting rid of them like for free or next to free. Um, and it's definitely worth. Uh, keeping an eye out for them for a couple of reasons and I'll allude to that in another item I'm about to show you but th this is just a Dell um, PC uh, quite old this is probably about at least I'd say eight years old the the i7 in this is an i7-860 it might even be older I think it's probably older um, but this is a, just the motherboard and the CPU. There's no memory included. Uh, RAM is the memory. So, you know, when people say, oh, I've got 16 gigs of RAM in my phone in a computer, the RAM would be in those black slots that you can see on the picture. Um, and uh, the, there's no memory. It's just the motherboard and the CPU. I do crucially have the IO shield. That is important if someone wants to install the motherboard into a computer. That That is like the back plate for... Uh, for your uh, motherboard. Um, I, I got this from a working PC. I took it out because the PC itself, it's, to sell it in one go, it's just not worth it. Um, I've taken the RAM out and I'm sell, I've sold this for 50 quid. So really pleased with that. It cost me next to nothing, guys. Um, so definitely, keep, if you know your PC stuff, old PC stuff is, is hot. People really like it. People love building retro PCs to run Windows 98 and Windows 7, etc. So definitely worth uh, keeping an eye on it if you're into this kind of stuff. If you're not, just don't worry yourself because it will probably take you too long to, uh, you know, just mess with it to make sure it's saleable. Um, I, I was able to quickly test this. I know it's working. I, you know, I have a, like a SSD drive that I can just plug into these things and boot it up, see if it's stable, runs fine, etc. And I'm, I'm good. Uh, but yeah, motherboards, You the reason why I'm sharing this is, sale is because A, it's a good sale, profit-wise, 50 quid, but also sold super quickly. And also, these are plentiful. You'll find them, like I said, at car boots, at you know, your Facebook groups, etc. Um, and there's an, like I said, there's another reason you should keep an eye out on old PCs as well, which I'll come to in a moment. Um, next item is a B&W Zeppelin iPod speaker. I paid a tenner for this. And I actually accepted an offer of £65 plus the £7.99 shipping. This is the older version. Um, the newer version commands more money. This is the original uh, Zeppelin. So it's designed for the iPods uh, with the 40-pin uh, connectors like this one. It does have its remote control and it does have, crucially, a 3.5mm auxiliary input on the back. So even if you don't have an iPod, um, you can plug in any its source via the 3.5 mil jack and you'll be able to play music through this. It actually sounds pretty decent. Bowers & Wilkins, B&W are known as a high-end brand um, and this is a quality bit of kit. However, this is the kind of stuff they made for the mainstream. Um, B&W make really high-end stuff all the way up to the Nautilus speakers, which were famously used in, I believe, I think it was a Justin Timberlake and Timberland song and they were like featured heavily in one of these uh, one of the music videos back in the day and um the B&W Nautilus are like I think 35 40 grand a pair 
um, speakers. So they make really good stuff. And then they make stuff like this, which is for the mainstream, you know, for, for someone who wants to plug their iPod in to listen to their music because, you know, that's you want to listen to your compressed digital music. Um, but yeah, there you go. Sold for 65 quid uh, plus shipping. Um, worth looking out for. Good brand to know what B&W. Now, this item is worth uh, mentioning for a couple of reasons. This is a Samsung CRT monitor. Like I was saying previously when I showed you the Dell motherboard, uh, old PCs are worth looking at because even if you don't mess with the PC itself, as long as you're capable of testing and shipping a monitor, monitors are commanding some serious money. This monitor is a 14 inch Samsung. It's not even a very nice monitor. Um, it's highest resolution is technically 1024 by 768 pixels, which is XGA resolution. However, I could only get it to correctly display in Windows 10 at 1024 by 600 um, or by 800 by 600 resolution. I was able to show this, as you can see, I've taken some pictures um, of it running. And again, this was gonna be just chucked with that, that computer that I showed. And um, it's a, a basic VGA 14 inch monitor. And it sold for my asking of $129.99 plus $7.99 shipping. Now, if you find a better monitor, um, you can get some even better money. I recently sold a 17-inch Sony for 250 quid, which had a higher resolution of 1280 by 1024 pixels. So old CRT monitors, um, definitely worth keeping an eye out for. If you know how to test them, etc. again, you, you have to kind of factor in, is it worth you doing that? Um, you know, are you capable of doing it? Are you capable of shipping these items safely? You've got to factor all that in. But I'm just sharing this because, again, it, it's an item that's kind of plentiful at the moment. No doubt, as time goes on, it's just going to become harder and harder to find these. But CRT monitors are still out there. And they are still being dumped with old computers. Um, and you can definitely snag yourself some pretty good uh, profit. Moving on, um, top trumps. Everyone knows about top trumps. I'm sure a lot of people are looking for them. Uh, there are certain top trump sets which command staggering, staggering amounts of money. This isn't one of them. However, uh, this came to me as part of like a little job lot of cards I bought. And again, you will find these all over carboos, all over everywhere you go, really. And this is like a set of horror ones. Um, so really amazing artwork from the 80s. Um, they got a variety of things. I mean, I love the Thing card there. These weren't like officially licensed, obviously, but it just says like King Kong and there's like a rendition. It's, it's just there's Godzilla, like Godzilla's got like a bow tie on, I think. I, I don't know. Uh, but really cool cards. Um, it was 32 cards, although I wasn't sure if it was all from the same set or not, but it was 32 cards and there are normally 32 cards in a complete set. Um, but this sold for 30 quid. So very happy with that. And, um, top trumps, vintage top trumps, look out for those, uh, vintage top trumps are pretty uh, unique in their look and their artwork and style. Uh, you should be able to differentiate them quite easily and they'll often come with like a red case. But also bear in mind that, again, like most things, most of them don't command much value. It tends to be things like horror. Look out for the Marvel superhero ones. Look out for the Marvel supervillains ones. Uh, those ones tend to be the ones that like people really like and will sell quickly for you. Um, another item. Now, this is pushing whether you're going to find this regularly a car boot um i i definitely don't think you will so bear that in mind this is kind of rare um but you can sometimes find rare action figures at car boots so you know something to look out for in that respect this is um a sota action figure this is a street fighter three figure um this has taken quite a while to shift because i actually had it priced at super high price um, I don't think I was particularly keen to sell it, um, but it has finally gone. I actually um, sent out, out an offer of £70 on it, sealed action figure. If you see any SOTA state-of-the-art action figures, the um, Street Fighter ones, they're worth money. Even if you see these Street Fighter figures loose, they're worth good money, um, as long as you can obviously pay a decent price for them. Uh, but yeah, this figure sold for 70 quid, so pretty pleased with that. This item you'll definitely see at Car Boots, wrestling figures. Um, I always look out for elite wrestling figures rather than basic ones. Um, and I always look out for Mattel elites um, rather than um, Jax figures. Jax do something called ruthless aggression and the, like their own version of elite figures, but Jax figures 
can have value, but I just prefer Mattel figures. I think they're nicer. So if you're looking at wrestling figures, make sure they're Mattel in the main. The Mattel figures tend to just be more in demand and sell faster, in my opinion, than Jax figures will. But there are certain Jax figures that do have quite a lot of value. Uh, but but also try to look for elite um, figures over the basic ones. Um, basic figures don't have as much articulation as the elite ones, and some elite figures have more value. Now, this guy's missing all his accessories. He doesn't have any of his alternate hands or any capes or anything like that that he would have come with that would have helped him get more value. Um, I think I paid like a pound or something for this at car boot um, with a bunch of other figures that I was picking up. And this sold very, very quickly for 15 quid uh, with free shipping, but super fast sale. Uh, this is Booker T. Now you can tell it's a uh, Mattel figure because it'll say Mattel on his foot. You can tell it's an elite figure because it will have a point of articulation on his chest there. And at the top of the thighs, that's normally a giveaway. If it's got those two points of articulation, um, then it's more likely to be an elite figure rather than a basic figure. Um, and finally, we're going to finish off with another little action figure. Uh, Toy Biz figures are, are, you can always find kind of old Toy Biz figures. When you rummage around in the boxes of figures, you'll often find them. This is a little figure of Modoc from the 90s. Um, he's like a Marvel like bad guy. He's also quite a popular character in Marvel vs. Capcom, a 2D fighting game. Um, and uh, he sold for 15 quid plus international shipping. In total, the buy paid £36. But again, it's the kind of item that you will see quite regularly at a car boot. You know, old action figure, right? Um, anyway. I hope you found some value in this. Um, I know I went on a bit and blabbered on a bit about the items, but I, I just thought I'd share with you some items. These are all sold for me within the last seven days. Uh, they're all items that I found at like car boots and things like that rather than um, anything specific. So uh, it, you should, in theory, be able to go out and find these on a quite regular basis. Nothing in here bar, I think, the Sota Guile figure, but even then, sealed action figures of any kind, you should be on the lookout for anyway. Um, and obviously do your research before you pay for them. Uh, but that's probably the rarest figure. Everything else you'll find, I'd say, on a, on, on, you know, if you're in a car boot season, you'll find them a couple of times, I'd reckon. Anyway, if you agreed with me, uh, say so in the comment section. Uh, if you enjoyed the comments, uh, if you enjoyed the video, say so in the comment section. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.